Welcome back guys, it's been a while. This video is uh, not gonna be about DSM stuff. It's gonna be about another car of mine that I've had a real long time that uh, I recently got out and we're gonna do some stuff to it. So behind me here is a 2002 Acura RSX Type S. I bought this car in probably 2007. Yeah, I'm, I'm showing my age here, but yeah, I bought it in 2007 from the original owner with 60 something thousand miles on it and the car's been uh, in my family since. It's got about 100 and 168,000 on it now, so I've put about 100,000 on it. Um, it's never seen winter in the time that I've owned it, so it's not all rotted out or anything like that. And decided it was time to get it out. It uh, has done a lot of sitting the last few years, and I'm going to drive it as a as a daily. The old old Accord gas tank rotted out, and I'm sick of driving the crummy pickup, so I'm getting it out. Need to get the seat reupholstered. I remembered that getting it out. It's uh, seat needs reupholstered pretty bad, but pretty pretty solid little car. Had one accident back in the day before I got it, so it had the front bumper replaced and some coolers and stuff. But other than that, everything else is still all original on the car. So all it's all it's got done new right now is it's just got an old school uh, K N N short ram intake. Um, it's currently on a Skunk 2 Alpha header, and for some old school Honda guys, it's got a Buddy Club uh, Spec 3 Pro on it for a catback. And it, uh, it does have Honda K Pro, and it is tuned at the moment. Otherwise, she's all stock, so. Not very fast, not in the same kind of ballpark as what our DSMs will do. They probably got 400 horse on this thing, but it's real good gas mileage, and it's fun to drive around. It is lowered too. It's got, uh, if I remember, I think it's got some Eibach Pro Kit springs in it, and I don't remember what what struts. It's been so long. I had rims on it back in the day, but what the video is going to be about today is it is currently on all factory speakers, factory amp, and a really crummy old Alpine head unit that everything stopped working on except the radio. So that was not acceptable to me. So I bought a whole bunch of new stuff that uh, we're going to get put in this today. So when I'm driving it, I don't have to listen to that terrible quality sound. All right, here's what we decided to go with. <clears throat> so the head unit, just a cheap Pioneer doubled in. This one is only, I don't know, 300 something bucks. Not, not anything crazy expensive. I don't go real ridiculous anymore on the head units because the cheap ones are fairly decent now. And when you got an amp anyway, it doesn't really matter how good the internal amplifier is on it. I do have the doubled in mounting bracket ordered. The car currently has a singled in one in it. That'll be here Wednesday. So if I do manage to get everything put in today, it'll just be a big gaping hole there with the radio till Wednesday when I can snap that piece in. Yeah, I know. I'll deal with it. For speakers, this thing should have all six and a halfs all the way around. And I ran a lot of different speakers over the years. And I can tell you, I think it was like a year or two, maybe two years ago, Alpine redid their Type S's. This now uses the cone and stuff from the Type R's and the crossovers from the Type R's. This new Type S they have for the price, fantastic speaker. I got a set of it in, them in my cord powered off just the head unit, and they sound pretty good at probably only getting, you know, 15 to 20 watts. So they'll sound real good in this. And we got a kicker 360.4 to power the speakers this amp um, on amp dynos that i looked up was doing i think the around 65 watts at one percent thd closer to 70 at 10 percent so that'll do good because these are 80 rms speakers so i can power them to within 10 watts of max so that should sound really really good and nice now i need to dig out some speaker wire Pretty sure I got some here. And I gotta also dig out some sound deadener and some other stuff, because when I put the speakers in, I actually seal the cone to the door with some stuff. And then I also will sound deaden around the speaker and behind the speaker on the outside of the door skin. If you do all that, that's how you get good sound. A good speaker can sound bad when it's not installed properly. So, oh boy. 
Okay, well, time to uh, pull out the factory amp. Joy. Here we go. Wow. I was just thinking, I think this is the first time I've ever pulled the door panels on this car. And judging by the look of it in here, how all this not that sticky stuff still sealed down, plastic's not even ripped around the plug. I think this might be the first time this door panel's ever been off. For sure, this vapor barrier's never been off on this. That's just crazy. A car this old you can still run into that's never been taken apart before. But I suppose that's probably the norm coming. I'm the second owner of the car. Just wanted to show that. That's pretty nifty. Normally you pull them apart and that vapor barrier's all ripped to hell for people being in there. All right, this was not the easiest idea I had to come up with here. So, this uh, car is not easy to install a six and a half inch speaker with a man sized magnet. Real easy. So you can't just ditch the factory bezel and put it in because it's too wide for the door opening. So I had to come up with a plan here. So here's what I did. I took the factory basket here that originally had this little cover on here you see cut it off flattened all the edges out real nice so it'll still the basket will mount to the door as it did originally then i got this adapter put on here that comes with the alpine speakers but now the speaker fits in this basket all the way and fits in the door and should still keep the spacing far enough out that it should seal to the front door panel. Because the front door panel on these have a foam surround on them to seal them. The speaker to the door panel, so it projects the sound out into the car. So this should work, but that's gonna make this job take longer because that took a good 30 minutes just to make this one right. But it's the price you pay when you wanna have good sound and keep everything looking original. But I'm gonna keep going. This is the factory speaker. Look at this tiny little guy. What are you gonna do with that little magnet? This thing weighs like nothing. Made in Indonesia. All right, let me get that speaker put in. All right, so we're still not quite home free like I thought we were. So all this works, goes on there, life's great. Well, the little crossovers in the back of the speaker are too wide to clear this tiny opening. So I'm gonna have to, I marked it. I'm gonna have to cut the door opening just a little bit wider here so it has the room for the crossovers to fit in there. Then I think we should be good. Then I'll have to confirm that the window has clearance, but that should allow it to mount in there and still keep the correct spacing to seal to the door speaker. So I'm gonna cut that edge out on that door and then I'll touch it up with some chassis savers so it doesn't start rusting on that bare metal edge where it's cut. Wish me luck. This is becoming a real pain in the ass to fit these six and a halfs in the front door of this. Should have just made bigger door openings, Acura. What the heck were you thinking? All right, here's where we're at now. So I cut the opening, so it's essentially the same size as my speaker hole here. Now, this, that screw's still sticking out, so it won't sit flush because it's sticking out right now, but, aha, uh -huh, everything will clear and it will go in there. Now you're probably saying, but Jed, you can buy from Metra speaker adapters that mount six and a half speakers in these doors. You're right. I wouldn't have had to make this custom little basket I made here, but I still would have had to cut the door opening because of the width of that magnet and the little, uh, crossovers on the back so it wouldn't have solved me the issue of cutting the door it would have saved me 30 minutes of making the adapters but I didn't have them on hand and I was eager so I just decided I was gonna make my own so I did and they're essentially the same thing as the ones you buy and I'll seal them up the same and everything that was a little unfortunate that I had to cut the door there was literally no way that that speaker would fit in there the way that I liked and have the clearance I wanted for everything so just the way I gotta do it, but it'll look nice and factory here when I'm done with it. So now I'm gonna chassis saver the edge that I cut, because anytime you cut metal or something like that, now that's bare metal on the edge, so. 
I'll uh, chassis saver it, take everything back apart, seal everything up, connect the wires to the back of the speaker, put it in, put the door panel on, the speaker's done. The wires will just be strewn into the car on the floor there, because you know, I gotta run it to an aftermarket amp. <sighs> How much time is this taking today? I'm not gonna have this all done, but if I can at least get the speakers in, for sure the front speakers and have the wires ran, that would be a huge, huge time saver. Because I was thinking I was gonna put that amp under the passenger seat, but now it's not looking so hot. I'm thinking it's probably gonna end up, I'll have to make a mount and put it on the back of the seat right here. Because I still got some subwoofer stuff to do and I'll just put that amp on the back of the other seat maybe. We'll see, I'll try. I'm such a perfectionist that I spend too much time making things perfect nobody will ever see, but I just have to do it. I can't leave stuff crummy. All right, let's keep on going. I'm over an hour in now and you can see how far I've gotten on one door because I'm being a perfectionist. <laughs> Sorry, I know this is cut after cut after cut here. I probably won't show the other speaker. That's why I'm being so much more in depth on this one. So the grill's mounted now. You can just barely see some of the seal I got on there oozing out of there. I used some strip caulk that I had around here because that stuff seals real nice and sticky. So that will seal the grill now to the door. I just put some around here and then seal the speaker to it. And then that'll do real well. Then I still need to put some dyno mat on the inside here, a little bit around the outside edge and that'll, that'll take care of it. But that's the most important thing is seal your speaker to the door. There's a reason from the factory they have foam on everything sealing it. It needs to be sealed for the speaker to sound good. Doesn't matter how nice of a speaker you put in there, if you don't seal it and it's just jankly screwed in, it's never gonna sound good. All right. And I was gonna show the factory plug and everything's still intact. I zip tied it up out of the way of the speaker. So in the future, if I ever, for some reason, decided to sell this car, which I don't plan to, I could easily remove my speakers, take my little adapter grills off. Factory speaker would bolt right back into the basket even with the mods I did and plug right back into the factory plug and nobody would be the wiser unless they actually pulled that speaker out that it ever had anything aftermarket in it. All right, got her strung through. Was not easy. This boot's a real tight one in there in the door jam here. Had to pull this out, unplug the wires, fish that into the door to then feed the wire through the boot and the jam to how I need it to be. But got my wire there. I'll zip tie it in here so it follows the factory loom and it jumps into the loom there where it's tight at the end so it's sealed. Goes through there so it's sealed and then dumps into the car here where it'll run to my amp. The ends here are gonna be uh, soldered and heat shrunk and the speakers themselves already come with little tight little like a uh, sealable clips that go on the end of the speaker to seal it so then Everything will be sealed for moisture, look 100% factory, and be as it should be. Yeah, two hours to put a door speaker in. It's not even wired all the way yet. That sucks, but that's the way to do it properly. I just can't stand how many times I see speakers in cars and they're just jankily screwed and the grill's cut out on the door and you can see wires through the jam. Just no, 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 no. That's not how I do it, that's not how we do it here. You do it right or you do not do it at all. So, this is what it takes. I mean, to put these in the amp and I mean, I'm probably gonna have eight, 10 hours and probably doing it, but when it's done, it'll all be worth it. So I'm gonna wrap up this side, put the door panel on. I'm not gonna show you the other side because you've already seen this side. You know the struggle I'm gonna have to do the other side. So I'll jump back with you here when I'm doing the rear speakers. All right, so fronts are all in, both door panels on, wires just strung out. The rears, oh boy. So the factory has a little like triangle looking speaker in there. I did some checking. I think I can make these work. So here's what I'm doing. Essentially cutting off both sides of the bracket on the speaker. So I got the one on the top, two on the bottom like the factory's mounted. Now this should fit now, so I masked off the silk tweeter here so it didn't get in the magnet, and I masked off the back of the speaker so I didn't get any shavings in the back. I first tried to tin snip it down, 
and it was just looking way too ugly. So I masked it up and actually ground the edges to make it nice and smooth. This should work now. So I'm gonna try to fit that in there and string the wires in for the rear now. All right, guys, all four speakers are in. Before I pop this last one over the cover on, I was gonna show you. I got the wires strung to the back here for uh, the rear speakers. I gotta string the front ones back yet, but this is what it comes out like. So obviously the completed one, factory grill on and everything. Nice and covered, good deal. Here's this side. You can see how much I had to trim on this now. Pretty much just had to leave three ears for it to clear. Not what I would call a bolt-in speaker. You gotta cut 90% of the mounting tabs off of it. But it will work and it will fit. So, that's nice, but you're gonna try to put some Alpine Type S's or something similar in <laughs> your RSX, just be prepared. You're gonna have to trim the crap out of the speaker to make it go. So, pop that cover on, string all the wires to the back. Still gotta run power and ground for the amp, remote turn on. And then I still gotta put the radio in and then set all the gains and everything. We're closing in on four o'clock. I've been going at this now almost six hours. I'm gonna keep pounding there though. I think I'll have it done, yeah, right around eight hours maybe. Let's keep going. All right, running my power cable now. Normally, there's a boot on the driver's side a guy could use, but not really on this car. So, found a nice boot over here that the main loom comes through. Oh, my light's right in the way for you to see. You can kind of see what's going on here. See that handle sticking out of there? What I do is I get a big, long screwdriver, tape the power wire to it, Look inside the vehicle out, make sure I'm not gonna spear a wire. Then give her a hoot and it'll pop through that boot. And then shove her in, which you can see here. Oh, see that red right there? The yellow? That's my power wire in the screwdriver. So now just undo the tape, pull the wire in, pull the screwdriver back out, and you got the power wire ran through a boot and it's nice and tidy and neat. So, I'm gonna do that and string that through the car. Getting there, getting there. I just wanted to show how I do that though, because I see guys take razor blades and cut boots and big holes and just, eh, now that works real great. Best way to do it's screwdriver that's long, tape it to it and just shove it through. Then when you pull it back out, the boot, you know, expands down a little and it pretty much holds pretty nice and tight right around that wire and keeps a good, good seal. If you really worry about it, you can take some Oh, you know, some kind of silicone or something if you wanted to smear around it. If you really wanted when it's a boot easier to get at, you can actually run it through the center part of it with the loom, but on this car it wasn't real easy to get at, and I don't want to run the risk of stabbing one of the main main uh, wires to the harness to the engine, so I just poked it off to the side through it. As long as it tightens up good once I pull the screwdriver out, we'll be good. If it's got some slack there, then I'll um, put some silicone over it. But All right, I'm going to keep going. All right, guys, just got done with it. It's a little after eight o'clock. I went home, ate with the wife. It took about eight hours. Um, it's still not quite all the way done. I am waiting on the dash kit that'll be in Wednesday. So for right now, the radio is just hanging out in an empty hole till that shows up. But I'm not driving this car yet, but. So everything's all in. All door panels are all back on. No wires, no dumb things like that to see. I need to get some uh, covering here. Buddy of mine's got some I gotta borrow that I'm gonna loom up on these wires and I'll actually slit the carpet when I do it so it's just like a little bit of the loom that you see, none of the actual wires itself, but pretty impressed. That uh, little kicker amp actually does pretty good. The burst sheet was 435 on it, so that would be 108 watts a channel. Granted, that's at two ohms, this is at four, but it's probably, well, off the test, I bet it's putting out all the 70 watts channel. It's, it's loud. After setting the gains and crossover, my ears are just ringing like crazy right now. I wish I could play it for you, but with copyright reasons, I don't got any music right now to play for you. 
So that's gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna clean everything up here and call it a night. Relax a little bit for the weekend and ready to hit the work week back up. If you watch this, thanks. It wasn't too exciting, but I figured I'd bring you through on my daily right now. But thank you. Like and subscribe if you want. If you don't want to, that's cool too. Thanks for lurking and watching. Have a good one.